Rainbow cichlids, originally from Central America, are one of these nice versatile fish that are going to suit a range of setups and aquariums. They are very, very mild mannered, which means you can keep them with the likes of medium sized tetra, loaches, and some small catfish. But they get to be about 5 inches, the males, the females slightly less than that. Therefore, you can keep them with slightly larger fish too, like Severum, angelfish, bigger acaras, and they are confident enough to stand up for themselves. I think they complement these electric blue acara really well because they are obviously blue with that yellow edge to their dorsal fin. The rainbows being the complete opposite, with that beautiful deep orangey gold colour and a blue edge to their dorsal fin. They have that striking horizontal black bar all the way along them, but they can dull their colours almost at whim, depending on what mood they're in, so you're going to see the best colours come out of them when they are healthy and happy. They can tolerate a range of temperatures, anywhere between 22 to 28 Celsius, so about 71 to 82 Fahrenheit, and they are going to prefer pH of anywhere between 7 to 8, I would say. Due to the size they get, I would prefer to see them in anything from a 40 gallon up, so maybe 150 to 160 litres and upwards. And they'll prefer a planted tank, well, unless they're breeding that is, at which point they will rip plants and even uproot them <laughs> if they're in their way. They only do that around their spawning site though, so if you're trying to encourage breeding, maybe give them a surface that is away from one of your favourite plants. So in a planted tank, I've kept them with the likes of Cori's, Otter Sinkless Catfish and Serpe Tetra. Nobody bothered anybody else, everybody was fine. And I've kept them with bigger fish like Sevs, as I said before, and Blood Parrots. They gave them a respectful distance, but didn't seem to be intimidated. They are going to prefer a slightly dimmer environment rather than a highly lighted tank, a brightly lit tank. And... If they are kept in a group, they tend to hang around together quite a lot. I wouldn't say they necessarily school. They do go off and do their own thing from time to time, but they do seem to appreciate each other's company. If they are kept in suitable conditions and fed well, then there's no reason that they can't last seven to eight years and be a beautiful fish to enjoy that whole time. When I say fed well, rather than anything, I mean everything. So they need a range in their diet. They will accept pellets, flakes, all the usual things. But they also seem to crave vegetables in their diet. I frequently offer green beans, courgette, broccoli even. And you can tell how important it is to their diet by how keen they are to chase it down once you throw it in the tank. They will also nibble at some algaes too. I routinely toss in duckweed from other tanks and they nibble away at that, sharing it with their tank mates until it's all gone. They are enthusiastic eaters as well and it's always nice to watch them enjoying a meal if they're not disturbed by other fish. Aside from vegetable matter, they're also going to need protein in their diet. One of the most accessible ways I guess of doing that for a hobbyist is frozen bloodworms, which I defrost in some of their own tank water. Dropping that into the aquarium and watching how excited the fish get as they chase down every single one is always one of the enjoyable things about keeping fish, I find anyway. It's pretty easy to breed rainbow cichlids, although it's probably less likely in an environment where there are other species present. However, if you've got a species only tank or you can separate a pair of adults, they are a fish that tends to breed quite easily and regularly. For that matter. So some signs to look for is their colours might intensify just that little bit more and they like to breed on a, a hard smooth surface so a rock like this a piece of slate even on the glass if nothing else is available and you might notice the male preparing area I showed you before you'll tear plants out of the way and start cleaning his spawning site. Next, he'll make a big effort to gain the female's attention and draw her over to the area to inspect it herself. 
You'll begin to notice the breeding tubes. So this is a female, hers is a little more rounded, whereas the male's is more like an arrow point. They will begin shaking towards each other, signaling their intentions and their readiness to breed. And then they'll both start cleaning the area and they take a long time doing it. They are meticulous. They make sure it's absolutely perfect until moving on to the next stage. When they're ready though, the female will start making passes, depositing her eggs and the male follows behind her fertilizing them. Again, this takes hours. It takes a long, long time. I wouldn't like to try and count them, but there must be 200 eggs there. More than that, maybe. So I try to leave them alone as much as possible at this stage. Make sure there's no traffic in the area. Maybe even dim the lights for them. Once the eggs are placed and fertilized, that's only the start of the job. They are very good parents. They normally take turns guarding the eggs and constantly fanning fresh water across them to make sure that they survive. 60 hours later, I think it was, I came in and noticed that eggs were gone and that is because they had started to develop into wigglers and the parents had moved them. They gather them up in their mouths and deposit them in a safer location, normally in a thick part of plants or in this case in the roots of this amazon sword they are quite sticky still at this stage that is so that they don't get swept away in the uh, slow moving rivers and streams that they originate from so the wriggling at this stage is more to develop their body than to actually propel themselves along however if some do become misplaced the parents will gather them back up and put them back in a nest they don't hatch out of the eggs like a bird or a reptile. Instead, they develop on the side of it so the yolk continues to stay with them and is their first food source for the first couple of days of their lives. Day four or five though, certainly before a week, they're already free swimming and searching out food in the rest of the tank. You might have noticed, interestingly, the lower half of the parents' bodies go much darker. I'm sure as a sign to their babies that everything is safe. At this point, they are fiercely protective of their little ones, and quite rightly too, of course, even if you're just trying to gather a bit of water. The reason for harvesting that is because I keep cultures of microworms that I think are an excellent first fire food. So probably best to use a paintbrush or something like that. And we aren't we aren't paintbrush, but I'm just using my finger here, scrape them off the sides of the tub and swish them around in the water. The idea being to suck them back up into my pipette, my uh, turkey baster rather, and deliver it to the fry. Obviously I will wash my hands thoroughly when I'm finished. Other first foods we can consider are first bites by Hikari, which is essentially a very, very fine fish food. If we don't have any of that, we could just grind up some fish food with a pestle and mortar. Or our baby brine shrimp is always a nice starter option. Infusoria would be great if you keep cultures of that. They will also certainly be grazing on microorganisms from in between the plants and other places in the tank. About the five or six week mark, they'll start to look like little miniature versions of their parents. But you can't keep them with the parents until that point. When the adults are ready to spawn again, they won't they won't tolerate the previous fry, so you either need to remove them. You could remove them on the rock at the egg stage, in fact, or you need to remove the adults. They're two weeks old at this point, and something I found quite interesting was watching them searching for food on the very rock that the parents cleaned to give birth to them just a couple of weeks previously. So, pretty cool rainbow cichlids, aren't they? They are a hardy, gorgeous, mild-mannered, easy-going fish, so you can put them in a range of setups, a range of aquariums with a whole load of different tank mates, interesting breeding behaviour, and just an absolute joy to keep.